Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel is Making with Marilyn. Now I designed this USA Cut file just recently and then I made it into a shirt last week on my YouTube Live. I've also made a similar design with rhinestones. Now after I did this shirt, somebody asked me, could you make that into an embroidery file? So guess what? That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to use my computer. I'm going to use Embrilliant software. I have Stitch Artist 2 and I have Essentials. And even though I'm going to be digitizing USA Design, if you're interested in learning more about Embrilliance, stick around and let's get started. We're going to work in Embrilliance today, so I'm going to go ahead and just click on Embrilliance to open it up. The first thing that I notice is this isn't the right size of hoop. This is a hoop that fits my Poolin single needle. But more people have a 10 by 6 or 6 by 10, and I want to make this so more people can use it. So to change the hoop size, one way you can do that is go right up here to Embrilliance, go to Settings, and I can select the one that I want. This 240 millimeter by 150 millimeter hoop is what I want. So I selected it, and I'll say OK. Now what I see is that the hoop's the wrong orientation. So to get that wide and short, I'm going to double click right here and it changes it for me. Now I already have the USA file as an SVG, so I could bring that and just work with it, but I really want to just start from scratch so you see from start to finish how to do this. Also, I'm not going to use actual embroidery fonts. I'm going to bring in a font from my computer system. To do that, you're going to go right up here. If you hover over it, it says Create Designs, and we'll click on it. Now I go over here to the TT, click on it, and then this box pops up. I want to change the font from Georgia to Impact, and then I'm going to back over this, and in all caps, I'm going to type USA. Now I can just say OK. We're probably going to adjust the size of this a few times, but let's at least start with it quite a bit larger. In my design, I want the S to be quite a bit taller than the U and the A. So let's go ahead and click off of it. And before we go forward, notice that this U extends that far down and the A doesn't. So the U is a little taller than the A, and that's just a feature of this font. I'm going to click on the A. And then I'm just going to make it taller. I'm going to leave it the same width and just make it taller. And I think that looks a little bit better. It's going to be more the same size as the U this way. All right, now let's click on the S. And I want to make it larger, but I want to start by having it proportional. So I'm going to drag from one of these side squares, because that's what keeps it proportional, or proportionate, whatever the word would be. And then now I just want it taller, so I'm going to drag from the top. And if I want to, I can drag from the bottom. Notice they're overlapping, and I don't want that. So let's click on the A. And then using the arrows on my keyboard, I'm just going to click it a few times to go to the right. I'll also click on the U, and I'll use the left arrow. OK, I think that looks pretty good. Now I want to select all of my letters, and for me the easiest way is go right back here, click on Create Designs, then I can just drag my cursor all the way around them. To align them the way I want, I go right here. If I hover over it, you see it says Align and Distribute. So let's click on that. If I wanted to align them at the top, I'd click here and I'd say Apply. But that's really not what I want. What I want is for them to be in the middle or to line up from their middle from top to down. Let me just show you what I mean. That probably didn't make sense. I'm going to click right here where it says Center V and Apply. And when I click Apply, then you'll see what I was trying to explain. OK, that's perfect. Then the Distribute, if I click on that, I'm adjusting them going the other way. So instead of top to down, it's side to side. So if I click on Center, there should be an equal space between the U and the S and the S and the A. So I selected Center, and I'll say Apply. 
and it moved the S just a little bit. Now I'm going to say close. Even though this is technically in the center, or distributed evenly between the U and the S and the S and the A, let me click off of it and back on it. I want to move it over just a little bit to the left. I think this is awfully close right here. Well, now I think the U needs to go over as well. I think I want the S to go just a little bit taller. So I'm going to go through that process again. Let's select everything. Sorry, that made my screen go down. Let me go ahead and move it back up. To drag it up, I hit the space key, hold the space key down, and then just drag it with my cursor. All right, let's select all three of those. We're going to go back to the Align and Distribute. I'll click on it, and I'll click on that center V and apply. And it moved the A and probably the U up a little bit. You just couldn't see the U. Now that I have the letters I want, let's start turning this into an embroidery file. For the USA, I'm going to make this into an applique. So when I do an applique, I like there to be a position stitch or a placement stitch. That's where the machine puts just a narrow line around where the letters go. It's called a placement stitch or a position stitch because it shows you where to place your fabric. After you set the fabric down, you typically have a tack down stitch. In here, I think they call it a material stitch. So then you run that stitch over your fabric. It's going to stitch in the same place as your placement stitch did. It stitches down your fabric. Then you can take the hoop off of the machine and trim your fabric. After that, you put it back on, and you're going to do that really pretty border satin stitch. So let's go ahead and make that happen. With everything selected, I go right up here, back to the Create Designs, click on it. And if I wanted this to be totally filled in, I could click right here. That's not what I want. Instead, I want an applique, so I'm going to click here. Now this border stitch is not what I want, so let's go right down here to applique, and there's a couple things I need to do. First of all, the default for my embrilliance is to only put a position or a placement stitch. Remember, I also want the tack down stitch, which they call material stitch. So with applique selected here, I'm going to click on material, and then I'm going to change my border stitch from an e-stitch to a satin stitch. I just think that looks so pretty. Because these are really large letters, I can have my stitch width be wider than three, and that's going to make trimming my fabric away and knowing that my satin stitch is going to cover the edge of the fabric even easier. So let's click here, and let's drag this up. I at least want to go to four. Let's try four and a half. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think maybe I could move the A over one. Okay, I think I like that just a little bit better. I have all the stitches of the main part of this design done. So let's go up to the stitch simulator and see how this would stitch out. We still have an issue with it. So I'll click right here on stitch simulator. And the way it's set up now, you would get the placement or position stitch of the U. Then you would get the tack down stitch. And then it would do the satin border stitch. After that, it would move on to the S. It would do the same three steps. And then finally it would do the A. Well, I don't want to have to do my letters individually. So what I need to do is color sort this. The color sort feature is in Embrilliance Essentials. This is why I bought Essentials. So let's go ahead and click back up here. Let me select, whoops, all right, let's click up there again. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select everything. And let's see, color sort. I think it's under Utility. We'll click on Utility and it's right here. All right, let's click it. It shows me a new view here, and if I want to start working with that, I just click right here, New View. And it tells you the design page has been reduced by six color changes. It makes it just so much more efficient. So I'll say New View, and notice my hoop changed. Let's go ahead and double click on the hoop, and it's going the right way now. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and select these again. Let's go back up to the simulator and you'll see what that did. Now I get all of my placement stitches. Then I get all of my tack down stitches. And then finally I get all of my satin border stitches. That's what I really want. If you wanted to have different colors on each letter, you could do that, but you would do that without the color sort. I want all three of my letters outlined with the same color. And the fact that I have a light yellow, a yellow, and a gray here really has no bearing on what color my machine is going to stitch. These are just letting you know when you change your colors. What really matters is what color of thread you put on the machine. All right, we're going to go ahead and add a couple of stars to this. First, we'll go ahead and finish this out. All right, that looks good. Now, let's go ahead and go right back up here. We're going to click on Create Designs, and we're going to put a star on there. Now, yours might look like this, but I was using stars earlier when I was playing with this design. If yours looks like something other than a star, you just go right here and click on Star. And then I can just drag my cursor and get the size I want. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's go with that. I'm going to drag it over to here and place it something, something like that. Let me see. Let's move it over just a little bit. Now notice that it started design two. I'll show you in a little bit why it needs to be a new design. But if yours ends up being like one colon four, instead of moving forward with one colon four, you would need to go up here to create, design, begin new design. That's going to be important in a minute. But don't move forward if when you make your star, it's nested under the ones. You want it to be a two. <laughs> you want it to be its own new design. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on the star. And for this star, I'm going to do a fill stitch. So I'll go right here and click on it. Now let's make that a little larger. All right, I think that looks better. And I want the point to be kind of centered between the S and the A. That looks good. Let's click on it. We're going to do Command-C for copy, Command-B for paste. And you can't tell that it pasted a new one, but it did. If I move it off, you see the old one right there. All right, let's find some place over here to put this star. And I feel like I need to make this star a little smaller. So let me click over here, drag this down, and let's just move it about right there. That looks pretty good. Now notice I feel like I'm wasting some space because I'm not using the full width. Let's go ahead and make the USA wider. You don't want to make the stars wider because it's going to get a mod shaped. So, so I'm going to go right here and select just the USA and let's pull it wider and I'm going to click on it again. I can pull it to the left. Now we're up to nine and a quarter inches wide, and I think that's a little better. I think I could still go even farther. We'll click on the design again and just keep dragging. Sometimes I have to click off and on things to get them to work, but that's okay. All right, that's about as big as I can go. So now let's adjust the stars. We'll have that one there. And let's move this one. Let's put it Let's go about right there. Now I do want to change the color of the stars. So I just don't like that gray. So I select it, go to color, click on the color that it is, and then, and then I'm going to look for a white. It's right here, so I'll say OK. So let's go to this one, and I can click on the color again. This time I can move from threads to palettes, 
and palettes will show me colors I've already used. That's easier to select the white from, so I'll select it and say OK. And then just for fun, let's go ahead and select the USA. It's this dark gray. Let's select it and then go back to threads. And then I want to find a red. I'll use true red and I'll say OK. So there's my design. I probably won't use these exact colors, but there's my design. And I'll show you why it was really important to have these stars as a separate part of our design. So as a number two versus a one colon four. Above the stitch simulator, I still need to do something, but I want to show you what it would stitch like first if I don't. So it would do my placement, my tack down, it would do my border stitches. Notice those border stitches are very solid, and then it would do my white stars. I really don't want to have that much bulk under the stars. So to fix that issue, let's go back to create. Let's click on create again. There it is. That's what I was looking for. We're going to click on these scissors, and it's going to remove the hidden stitches. So you're not going to have the amount of bulk behind your stars. Let's click on it, and then one more time, let's run that stitch simulator. We'll click on it. We have our position or placement stitch, our material or tack down stitch. Then notice, let me just stop it right here. Notice these gaps in the thick thread. That's so those stars can stitch out more smoothly. So you see the gaps here, 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 and here. And then here's how the stars fit on top. So just to double back, the reason it was important to have the stars as their own design number, design number two, and not nested with the number one steps, is that you have to have two separate designs to be able to use the hidden stitches feature. I have an entire video devoted to using and working with hidden stitches. It goes into a lot more detail about this feature than I did today. I'll have a tag at the end of this video that you can click on if you want to check it out. I'll also put a link to it in the description of this video. Now let's go ahead and save this design. So I'm going to go right up here to File. I'm going to save this as a stitch file and a working file. The stitch file is what I have to have for my actual embroidery machine, and the working file would allow me to still make changes. So if I want to come back into Embrilliance, if I use that working file, I can still edit this file and be fine. So I'm going to say Save As, and then I like to save my embroidery files as EMB, and then I'll put USA. Let's go ahead and put the word applique in there as well. For now, I'm going to save this as a DST file. So I'll say Save. But let me show you how easy it is to save it as other types. Go back to File, Save As, Stitch and Working. Now I can go ahead and move this to PES, and now I have a working file, I have a DST file, I have a PES file. Let's go File, Save As, and then we'll also go ahead and save it as a VP3 file. So I'll click on it and I'll say Save. So hopefully you found some value in this tutorial. If you want to see me stitch this design out, make sure you're subscribed. Also, if you are subscribed, make sure you tap that bell and select all notifications. That way YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. So if you want to see me stitch it out, stay tuned, watch for those notifications, and I'll be back soon for that. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And until my next video, bye-bye.